a plan to take Singapore through the COVID-19 pandemic and beyond as the country progressively opens up and adapts to living with the virus. In the immediate term, households, including parents of newborns, will get help with expenses. All workers, including the vulnerable, will receive help to upskill and secure good jobs. Companies and workers in hardest-hit sectors will have training subsidies extended to allow them to upgrade during this downtime. And there will also be a five-year plan to help push Singapore to become an innovation-led economy. Our coverage begins with this report from Brandon Tanoto. Financial aid under support schemes will continue to flow to households in the coming months. Aspiring parents who've postponed plans to have children because of financial uncertainty are set to get more under a one-off support measure for newborns. That's on top of the up to $10,000 in benefits they'll get under the baby bonus cash gift. This month, households will get grocery vouchers and rebates on utility bills. Low-wage workers will also get the second disbursement of a $3,000 cash payout. And to ensure support does not taper off too sharply for businesses either. Further enhancements and extensions have been made to schemes. For one, a training support package which provides cost-fee subsidies for firms in hard-hit sectors like air transport, retail and tourism will be extended for another six months and now cover the marine and offshore sector. However, given the gradual recovery in the economy, the subsidy will be lowered from next year. Levels are also reduced for a loan scheme aimed at helping firms manage cash flow, even though it's been extended. As for workers, there's more help for persons with disabilities in finding jobs as well, with the government helping firms fund half of the wages of each new local hire. The government will also study extending income relief for self-employed persons based on the labour market and economic situation and provide an update by the end of this year. All this support for our firms will ultimately benefit our workers. The best way to protect the welfare of our workers is a good job. By helping viable firms stay afloat during this difficult period, they can retain their workers. By helping firms to restructure and retrain their workers, they can emerge stronger. More competitive and productive firms can provide better jobs and better prospects for workers. And more skilled and committed workers make firms more competitive. Mr Hing says the support measures committed earlier are expected to prevent a further 5.6% contraction in GDP this year and 4.8% in 2021. Our economic support measures will also offset some of the rise in resident unemployment rates by about 1.7 percentage points this year. This could mean about 155,000 jobs saved over these two years, although we will still see job losses overall. More than half of the jobs saved are due to the Jobs Support Scheme, or GSS, alone. This outcome has only been possible with the collective determination, adaptability and sacrifice of our people and businesses.